The time, the, uh, gentle, the uh, gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. Mr. Mueller, how many people did you fire, how many people on your staff did you fire during the course of the investigation? How many people did you fire? I, I'm not going to uh, uh, discuss that. You fired, according to the uh, Inspector General's report, attorney number two was let go, and we know Peter Strzok was let go, correct? Yes, and there may have been other persons on other issues that have been uh, either transferred or fired. Peter Strzok testified before this committee on July 12, 2018, that he was fired because you were concerned about preserving the appearance of independence. Do you agree with his testimony? Uh, say that again, if you could. That he said he was fired at least partially because you were, you were worried about a... Um, Concerned about preserving the appearance of independence with the special counsel's investigation. Do you agree with that statement? And the statement was by whom? Peter Strzok at this hearing. And I am not familiar with that. Did you fire him because you were worried about the appearance of independence of the, of the investigation? No, he was uh, transferred as a result of instances involving uh, texts. Do, do you agree that... Do you agree that your office did not only have an obligation to operate with independence, but to operate with the appearance of independence as well? Absolutely. We strove to do that over the two years. Andrew Weissman? Part of, part of that was making certain that... Andrew Weissman's one of your top attorneys? Yes. Did Weissman have a role in selecting other members of your team? He had some role, but not uh, a major role. Andrew Weissman attended Hillary Clinton's election night party. Did you know that before or after he came onto the team? Don't know when I found that out. On January 30th, 2017, Weissman wrote an email to Deputy Attorney General Yates stating, I am so proud and in awe regarding her disobeying a direct order from the president. Did Weissman disclose that email to you before he joined the team? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. Is that not a conflict of interest? I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that. Are you aware that Ms. Jeannie Rhee represented Hillary Clinton in litigation regarding personal emails originating, originating from Clinton's time as Secretary of State? Yes. Did you know that before she came on the team? No. Aaron Zelby, the guy sitting next to you, represented Justin Cooper, a Clinton aide who destroyed one of Clinton's mobile devices. And you must be aware by now that six of your lawyers donated $12,000 directly to Hillary Clinton. I'm not even talking about the 49,000 they donated to other Democrats, just the donations to the opponent who was the target of your investigation. Can I speak for a second to the hiring practices? Uh, uh, we strove to hire those individuals that could do the job. Uh, I've, been, yeah, okay. I've been in this business for almost 25 years, and nope. in those 25 years, I have not had occasion once to ask somebody about their political affiliation. It is not done. What I care about is the capability of the individual to do the job and do the job quickly and seriously and with integrity. But that's what I'm saying, Mr. Mueller. This isn't just about you being able to vouch for your team. This is about knowing that the day you accepted this role, you had to be aware no matter what this report concluded, half of the country was going to be scheduled, skeptical of your team's findings. And that's why we have recusal laws that define bias and perceive bias for this very reason. 28 United States Code 528 specifically lists not just political conflict of interest, but the appearance of political conflict of interest. It's just simply not enough that you vouch for your team. The interests of justice demand that no perceived bias exists. I can't imagine a single prosecutor or judge that I have ever appeared in front of would be comfortable with these circumstances where over half of the prosecutorial team had a direct relationship to the opponent of the person being investigated. Well, let me, one other fact that I, I put on the table, and that is we hired 19 lawyers over the period of time. Of those 19 lawyers, 14 of them were transferred from elsewhere in the Department of Justice. Only five came from outside. And so half of them had a direct relationship, political or personal, with the opponent of the person you were investigating. And that's my point. I wonder if not a single word in this entire report was changed, but rather the only difference was we switched Hillary Clinton and President Trump. If Peter Strzok had texted those terrible things about Hillary Clinton instead of President Trump, if a team of lawyers worked for, donated thousands of dollars to, and went to Trump's, Trump's parties instead of Clinton's, I don't think we'd be here trying to prop up an obstruction allegation. My colleagues would have spent the last four months accusing your team of being bought and paid for by the Trump campaign, and we couldn't trust a single word of this report. They would still be accusing the president of conspiracy with Russia, and they would be accusing your team of aiding and embedding in that, with that conspiracy. And with that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman from